Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode we're going to deal with our missions currently around EVE, but first I wanted to talk a little bit about nitrogen since it's giving me sort of a headache. And you know, it's not really that bad in terms of mass. This 4000 nitrogen in this Chikra storage container is only 5 kilograms, right? And it's more about, you know, our capacity to uh, bring it up. and you know we're getting steadily larger containers for the nitrogen so that might be okay but still it's a bit of a hassle and I wanted to figure out because in the last episode I said it doesn't seem to make any sense let's just nail down what the number ought to be I'll tell you the number that I think it ought to be and you'll tell me whether the math makes sense to you so it's gotta be a little bit tedious because I'm gonna be going over math and uh, so yeah just expect that so we've got 4,000 units in here they're uh, five kilograms and it says here that the duration without any kerbals in, uh, no kerbals, um, 79 days, 4 hours. And it's a leak rate of 0.139 per minute. Okay, so that's what we've got right now. And so that's for 5 kilograms. So that's, it's not that bad when you think about it. But is it right? Well, I decided to pick up a NASA paper from the technical report server. Uh, and that paper is... Trending of overboard leakage of ISS cabin atmosphere. Seems like the right thing to look at. And if we take a look, um, first of all, uh, in 2011, which is what we're going to be going with, because this mainly talked about the situation after the shuttle retires. And, you know, when it's no longer visiting, are we going to have enough nitrogen uh, being replenished? And But as of 2011, the free air volume is, let's say, 900 meters cubed. Okay, and that's close enough, hopefully. And um, yeah, they discuss theoretical leak rates. There's a lot of data in here about specific events and how airlocks lose the air. You know, you have to account for that. But again, we're looking for a leak without any kerbals on board. So there, we shouldn't be having any airlock usage in that case. Um, it's got to be tough to model, you know, airlock usage, but that's a separate issue altogether. So down here we have the ISS module volumes and leakage data and unfortunately this is in pounds per day but you can see module by module they don't leak that much. This is a pretty bad one and uh, mainly because it's fairly big and uh, this is 0.006 pounds per day which means that in a thousand days it would leak six pounds. Now compare that with roughly 80 Kerbal days uh, to leak five kilograms. So this leaks, that's just one module. But then again, this module is larger than the hitchhiker storage container, right? And um, some of these other modules leak even less. Now this is the actual ground leakage. That's not the same as the leakage in space. And so let's take a look. The conclusion tells us the leakage in action, what it's actually doing. Leakage of air on ISS can be tracked by the partial pressure and calculating the nitrogen mass. Uh, the low levels mean that they can't even figure out where the leak is happening. Well, except for that hole on Soyuz, of course. But, um, yeah, they're, they're not entirely sure where the leak is happening. But basically in 2011, which is the volume that we're going with, it leaked 0.227 kilograms per day of air. And I'm just going to assume the air is all nitrogen. That will give us an overestimate for how much nitrogen we need to replenish. Uh, actually, of course, it will be a mix of nitrogen and oxygen. Uh, but 0.227 kilograms per day. Okay, let's take that and run with it and we will see what kind of numbers that gives us. I'm gonna pretend it's 900 meters cubed and I'm going to assume that the ISS is composed of modules that are 4 meters in diameter, which is roughly right, and 8 meters long. And uh, modules that are like that would have a volume of 100.5 meters cubed. You can see why I wanted to pick that. That means that we've got nine such things. We need to figure out the surface area because Kerbalism assumes leakage based on surface area. And so what's the surface area of nine uh, modules like that? Well, we've got the circular end pieces. Uh, with nine modules, there'll be 18 of those and pi times r will be 2 squared. And um, that I calculated out to be 226.2 meters squared. Now the cylindrical portion, we have nine of those and we want to multiply by two pi r, oops, and r is again two. 
and then multiply by 8 because that is the length of the cylinder. And so I did that and got 904.8 meters squared. So one of these has a surface area of 1131 meters, not one of these, all nine of these has that surface area. That's what we're talking about. Uh, so what is the surface area of the hitchhiker storage container? Okay, so taking a look at Kerbal, well, it's a 2.5 meter uh, diameter piece, and it looks like it's about 2.5 in height. So we'll just go with that as what it is. Anyway, the total surface area I got was 29.46 meters squared. Okay, so we've got a relative amount. Now, for this amount, that was 0.227 kilograms per Earth day. Well, how much is that for a Kerbin day? Well, the Kerbin day is one fourth of an Earth day. So that is one, a 0 0.056, I'm looking at my notes. Uh, I think it was one five kilograms per day. Let's just overdo it and say 0 0.057, okay? And let's get the amount per meters squared. And then so the hitchhiker storage container would be this multiplied by that. What does it do right now? Well, it was five kilograms and we'll just say 80 days. So right now it is losing 0 0.0625 kilograms per day. Well, that's a pretty big difference. That's a factor of 42 that it is off. Uh, when we see the pressure control here, what we see is uh, that it is using 70 meters squared as the basis. And so for 70 meters squared, and the number here has to be in liters, not kilograms, right? Because uh, everything in Kerbal is volume, not mass, as far as the configuration files is concerned. So if we want the real number it should be 0 0.003528 kilograms. And what is the kilograms per liter? So one liter is 0 0.00125 kilograms. Or put it a different way, of course, uh, one kilogram is 800 liters of nitrogen. Um, now, the number that they seem to be using in here is per minute, not per day. So, <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, so let me get the per minute rate. Okay, so the number I've got is 0 0.00784 liters per minute is the number that should be going in here for 70 meters squared of surface area. And that is based on the number we got point, uh, well, 0 0.00005 kilograms per day per meter squared multiplied by 70. That gets us the weight. And then we have to multiply by 800 to get the liters because it's 800 liters per kilogram. And then it's in minutes. So then we have to um, make sure to divide by six for hours per curb and day and then 64 minutes per hour. And so that's why I did to get that number. And if you multiply this number by a factor of 42, you get roughly that number. You actually get 0.33. Uh, so that makes sense because I calculated earlier that the factor it was off by was a factor of 42. So uh, if this all makes sense to you, uh, maybe I can change this. But uh, just, just for my own thing, or you can change it on yours. The file that you want is default.config in profiles in Kerbalism. However, we may have to also change this because this is putting atmosphere into the system, whereas it probably shouldn't be taken out at the uh, high rate in the first place. So it should be at this, this lower rate because, yeah, uh, mass conservation. But um, somewhere else in here is probably something that's taking out the atmosphere, right? Atmo leaks. But now this number and uh, oh, they actually have the numbers here. Oh, th they've got the activities here too. Ah, well, I see where they might have made a mistake here. 
I don't know how they got from 899 meters cubed volume to only 452 meters squared surface area. Remember, I got 1,131 meters squared. So that's one factor that seems to be, this is the same number I got, so they seem to have the same paper. Um, so we're working off the same number there. But then these activities shouldn't be there when there's no Kerbal. Um, I don't know what this rate is because it's definitely not the same thing that we have here. And it's not related to this number. So I don't know what that number is, but that seems to be the number that we're interested in. So anyway, that's enough about the nitrogen. So that's what I figure, but I won't change it just yet until I get some verification. Okay, so proceeding with the business of the day, we have EVE Probe 2 here, and I'd like to get into a lower orbit, uh, particularly because when it lands, it'd be nice for our communication line to be where our periapsis is. Right now, it's where our apoapsis is, so uh, the thing is, we'll lose communication at our periapsis, which is not good. So... Let's try and bring it down as much as possible. And then uh, this probe, this Gilly probe, is going to have to help us with communication. So is it going to ever tell me uh, what the perspective range between them is? I think it only shows the line back home. Um, vessel links. There we go. Okay, so now we can see what, how far we can stretch that particular line. That's got to be, but I need to figure that out without these open, darn it. Uh, I don't feel like testing that out right now. So, Eve's atmosphere, let's remind ourselves. I think it's 90 kilometers. All right. Let's lower our orbit a little bit first and then check out what happens when I turn off those antennae. Because they got to snap off in the atmosphere anyway, and we want to get surface science. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of radial to pull this up. And we're using a lot of fuel, but we have a lot of fuel, so it's okay. Okay, that will do fine. Well, now I'm going to take a risk losing communication. Okay, so our strength to Gilly probe is 10% right now at that length. I think that's a fairly good benchmark. And maybe we can get the exact distance to Gilly probe. Rendezvous planner. Right now we are, well, separation of closest approach. No, I really want our current distance. Oh, I have a rendezvous window there. All right, our current distance to target is 2,500 kilometers. So, okay. Uh, let's get the other antennae back open. But it looks like 2,500 kilometers and we're good. So, we'll try and manage that. Uh, let's get, I, I don't really want the ghillie probe to get lower, but it'd be better if it was, its apoapsis was somewhere like here problem is it's supposed to be going to Gilly later so that makes it hotter for it let's see how much Delta V we have there okay well this has 2,500 so let's just say we've got this weak communication line there and we would like just imagine that line in this direction and we want our apoapsis over here somewhere now can we do a burn directly at periapsis using well Eve probe 2 doesn't have a relay antenna unfortunately so the answer is no we'll obviously still have to make sure that uh, this is on the same side as the Eve probe 2 when Eve probe 2 tries to make the landing uh, the trick is how long it takes Eve probe 2 to actually get down to the surface I want to arm the parachute ahead of time We might have to hope it gets to the surface and then regain communication. 
Okay, we've got 27 minutes to Appalapsis there. Let me check what's going on with Eve, Eve Pro 2 here. Thirty one till there. Hmm. If we aim for landing over here, maybe it'll work out. Uh, check on the parachute. Um minimum pressure. Well, we could wait a while, can't we? Let's say point five. I mean probably point seven five would still be good. There's a lot of pressure. Okay, now we're jettisoning this stage. Really? <laughs> and we actually got to flip around in order to use the ant engines. Coming in a little bit harsh into Eve's atmosphere. In order to make sure that we land in the right location, it's probably good enough, right? So that's my last program command. The parachute is armed. We retract antenna and we see 5% to ghillie probe, but we're going to be catching up with it. It's got to be hanging out up there and we're going to be catching up to it. So that's only going to get better for the time being. All right. Okay, we're in the atmosphere. We should do some sciences. Radiation. Transmit. 33.6 apiece. Well, the communication is not too bad right now. 34%. Might as well observe a mystery goo in here, and then one for landing. Well, recovery, uh, it's not worth anything, jeez. I hope the science genius is going to be worth something. Plasma blackout. Okay, lots of g-forces. And calming down, though the plasma is still there. Okay, we're through and we're back on the communication. Uh, is this lower atmosphere yet? Uh, still upper atmosphere. Still says we haven't done it yet. Did we do the... I don't know. Whatever. If they say I can get signs from transmitting, I'm gonna give it a go anyway. Let me try a goo. RCS malfunction on Gilly Mission 1? Well, jeez. Does it have RCS? Well, we don't get any goo observation from that. What did it actually say? Gilly... Oh, Gilly Mission 1. Oh, that might be a problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not Gilly Probe 1. Gilly Mission 1 does have RCS, so that little pod can read on. Okay, our parachute has deployed, so we're gonna take a while to get down to the surface. <laughs> uh, this should be lower atmosphere by now, right? Flying. Okay, flying at Eve, I'll take it. How about Science Junior? I mean, I'm not going to keep this one at, until... Well, jeez. Unless we actually get to retrieve it, it doesn't look like Science Junior and Goo are worth anything at Eve, which is weird. I mean, just a little bit would be nice. Okay, splash down. Observe Material Bay. Still nothing. Yeah, we'll record it. And thermometer. 44.8 science. We'll tag that for transmission. And radiation. Tag that for transmission. We can extend the antennae now. Even though one antenna is underwater. It'll still be good. Okay. Yep, direct link to Kerbin. For the time being, but we I wanted to see this stuff transmitted. So oh it's it's transmitting. Okay, so we've gotten our sciences. We've landed a probe on Eve. Don't know if they get yeah, splash down on this down in the oceans of Eve, so we got that. And other messages. I don't know if we had a contract for this or not. We got signs today from space around Eve, though. All we've got left is harvest food in space and then stuff to do with Ike. Nothing at all to do with Gilly. 
Well, we are going to try and do something with Gilly. So back to the Gilly probe. Okay, so here we are with our Gilly probe and I've plotted a maneuver that will take about 870 meters per second. That will get us an encounter, but burns in three days. So we're gonna have to wait, but basically we're waiting for Gilly to come around and meet up with us so that we can reach it at our descending node there. So it's an off-plane transfer. I don't want to correct 30 degrees of inclination anyway. So uh, the maneuver is going to be here in three days. Let's see what we can do with our crewed mission. Finally, we're visiting our crewed mission after neglecting it for so long and see what it can do to meet up with Gilly. Uh, though uh, we should have it do uh, sciences as well, though I think I've got the low over eve sciences. Let's just check. It's worth, uh, well, since we have three days anyway, we might as well check that. I tried to get transfer window planner and uh, apparently it's not been updated. So all we can do is uh, go from Eve to Kerbin and get this alarm. That's in one and a half years. And let's take a look at, well, let's visit our mission and see what our life support is like. But I think we, we had three years, so should be okay. Um, okay, stop, stop, stop. Oh, off, 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 off. Um, Uh-oh. Uh, is our RCS problem uh, constantly firing our... Uh, yeah, it's got a malfunction. Okay. Um, can Bill fix that? Repair RCS. Okay. Crisis averted. It looked like it was just going to be leaking and leaking constantly. Now let's board. I don't know how much mod propellant we lost there. The pod needs its mod propellant after all. Uh, it looks like 0.05 only. So that's good. Alright, so as far as life support's concerned, it says two years. I mean, basically, even if the transfer takes another year, we'll still be able to make it just fine. So we've got buffer. Hmm. I thought I packed a commensurate amount of nitrogen. I didn't... It seems like we have an excess of nitrogen. Anyway, probably for the best. Okay, so the poodle isn't really busted, uh, even though it says critical failure. I wonder if it can get a further failure when it already has a critical failure. Does that mean it's immune right now? Because I guess it lost its gimbling, but does that make it immune to further failure? I do not know. We're in a seven-day orbit which is somewhat inconvenient for meeting up with uh, Gilly because if it's gonna come around in three days, that's a bit too long. Let me see, add a maneuver. Okay, I've got an encounter by some crazy magic here. We've got a 50 meter per second burn there in two days and then another burn there in three days. That's a total of less than 300. And then we get an encounter in five days. So let's get this, well, let's get this done, because that's the first thing. I didn't create an alarm for the Gilly Pro, that's a mistake on my part. Oh, we can see Jewel there. Yeah, I think we've done all the signs. Let's do this burn. Make sure our periapsis doesn't go into the atmosphere. Okay, that's good enough. And we'll queue up the next burn. Oh, five hours? Five hours is before the Gilly Probe needs our attention, so we can proceed directly. Basically, right now, the Gilly Probes are lifeline back as far as communications. You know, at this rate, we might be able to use the station's fuel to not just capture it into an orbit around Kerbin, but a nice low orbit to make it easier to transfer to it. We'll wait until we get there to figure things out. Let's add the SOI change alarm. All right, so that'll be in two days. Um, nope, we don't need to add anything more. Now we focus back on the ghillie probe. Everything okay here? Everything seems to be okay, yep. That's a fine approach. Being polar probably is a good thing. Let's leave it right there. 20 kilometers. Okay. We will have to do a burn to make orbit and everything. Let's check out how much that's going to cost. Okay. 
660, uh, 661.7. We can do it. Okay, so that's in one day, and Gilly Mission 1 will be in two days, so let's go ahead and follow this in. Now, one question in my mind is, uh, how uh, has Kerbalism changed how much EVA fuel, how much Delta V we get from the EVA packs for the Kerbals? That's something I'm mildly worried about, because, of course, I think we're just going to have our Kerbal EVA down to the surface of Gilly, maybe. We might as well have this land on the surface, do some science, and then pop back up again. Uh, we should have it basically in the same orbit we have right now. Uh, wait a minute. Let's see. That's the line back home. Yeah. Uh, something that will maintain a good line back home. Maybe slightly different location. We've captured... Uh, we're already going down. I guess that's fine. Yeah, our landing location will maintain communication with Kerbin, so yeah, sure, why not? Let's just go ahead and land. Orbital period's like an hour and a half, though. That's the downside of Gilly. Okay, is anything bound dependent as far as temperature or pressure? I'm uh, not pressure, radiation. I think the surface biome really doesn't matter right now. The long orbital period also means that if we do have a Kerbal go out and EVA down to the surface and then pop back up again, we have to worry about the life support situation. But in this case, we could visit this probe. Yeah, well, we'll wait till the surface. We could get one of the mystery goose, but yeah, we can have the Kerbal visit this probe and take the data. Come on, Gilly, you can do it. Bring us in. Let me reduce the speed. Okay, I think we're on the ground. Observe materials bay. Yes, keep. Mystery goo. Keep. Yep. Radiation. Uh, we can transmit that right away. And temperature. Okay. While we've got things, let's get this back into orbit. Okay, I think that's manageable. Let's get up to Apoapsis. Oh, darn it. Maybe a time warp limitation should only be if you're going down. If you're going up, it shouldn't matter. That doesn't look exactly like a uh, orbit that would always maintain communication. It's not quite at the right place, but I'll take it for now. Okay, so this is good. We'll keep it there. And now let's turn to our crude mission currently approaching. Okay, we are entering Gilly SOI. Unless we capture, we're not going to be in it for very long. And the capture is going to take a while because it's 779.2 meters per second. So let's get started. We'll finally get rid of this problematic poodle stage. I think for the most part, we'll capture within that poodle stage. So 1 minute and 35, so we don't have to start immediately. Let's uh, get some science here. Unfortunately, Science Junior again. Well, I mean, actually, the other Science Junior I think we did on the ground, so this is going to be new, and we will get to retrieve it, so that's okay. Okay, let's start trying to make orbit. Okay, separation. And spark engine time. That should be good. We want to stay out of the 8 kilometer range, which would take us out of time warp. So we're in a sort of long orbit here. Five hours. Okay, well, first I'll want Bill to uh, grab that science from the probe, maybe, and then we'll take a look at whether we can get this into a low orbit. Anyway, yeah, time to EVA. EVA report. Keep forward. Okay, well, we're gonna do this minor burn first. 
and that'll get us a little tangency over there it'll correct our inclination and everything and then we will rendezvous cannot delete maneuver node control locked um we should have crew control here right I can activate SAS, but I can't delete a maneuver node? That seems weird. Okay, there's an encounter after we do two really, really tiny burns. Okay, I've handled the minor maneuvers, and we are matching velocities with the target. And heading towards the target. So soon that sweet science will be ours. Now we can't reset the instruments unfortunately because Bill is not a scientist. But probably for the best that we didn't try to carry two Kerbals. Well, first of all, we wouldn't have been able to bring them back with just one pod there, one, uh, one Kerbal pod. But um, also, I don't think our life support would have been sufficient seeing how long the gap is uh, to get back as as it so happens. I thought it'd be one and a half years for the whole trip, but seems like it's longer than that. That's probably, that's why I wanted a transfer window planner, but again, has not been updated. It might still work, but plugins are a bit touchier than part mods. 3.4 meters, well, with the size of this thing, that's probably crashing into it, so we better be prepared to slow down here. It seems like they don't have as much Delta V as they used to. I feel like it's like maybe less than 50, so I don't know. What, uh, we can't restore, right? But can, can't we just take the data? Oh, the data is probably in the core, right? That's how it works around here. Take data. Okay, hopefully that's all of it. But yeah, we can't restore this. Right, only scientists can. All right, I think we've got all the data. Convenient for it all to be in the same location. Okay, grab and board. Well, I mean, we'll get into a low gilly orbit and reassess whether we can safely land or not. You know, we could probably just land this thing, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, I'd probably retract the solar panels first. But yeah, we could just land the whole thing. Yeah, that's better. That's a better idea. Okay, let's just safely move away from the probe. If we actually land this... Well, we've already used the Science Junior, but we've got a lot of goo containers. Well, we've got... Uh, few material studies. Yeah, landed at the highlands. So we don't want to go to the highlands again. That's one thing. Let's just land here at the lowlands. Why are we waiting? Why even wait? This thing has 2,000 meters per second. Plunging right in. Well, obviously we want to flip around, but we're only going 20 meters per second right now. Okay, right about here-ish. Observe mystery goo. Keep. Yep. That'll be fine. EVA. EVA report. Okay, keep board. Crew report. Keep. All right, let's retract solar panels. I'm not going to go biome hopping, um, especially since we don't have the Science Junior ready, though. Maybe one other location for the goo. But we're not gonna milk Gilly out of all of its science or anything like that. Station, surface base, it's all about the same around Gilly. Oh, no, 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 you're not supposed to follow anything, stop that. Oh, are we on the ground? I think we're on the ground. Alright, uh, I didn't even realize that. Okay, I was looking at the numbers. Very important to look at the numbers. But all right, well, we can do some science here then. Uh, goo. Keep. 
So that leaves us with, I think, one goo container left. Crew report, of course. And that we can transmit. This is a new biome for the re... Uh, nope, looks like Gilly's surface, the radiation data is not biome dependent. Uh, temperature is, though, so that's good. Okay. EVA for us. Um, don't knock the station slash surface base, please. All right, nice landing. EVA report. Keep. And I guess it's auto transferring to. Oh, transmission of EVA report completed. We can transmit like that. Okay, keep surface sample. That we can't transmit. And time to plant a flag. All right, uh, stop floating, stop floating. Uh, get, 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 get down, get down. Stop it, stop it. All right, plant a flag. Okay, Bill, Bill's floating again. Bill at Gilly. Gilly, let's specify lowlands. No pilot necessary. Yeah, well, he's the first to leave the Kerbin SOI. Well, you know, go interplanetary at least. All right, safely back in. Now, which way do we go? Let's just go east. It's too slow, though. I think I've, I've had enough. <laughs> I mean... It's just too slow. Gilly's so slow always. Yeah, I'll just get him back into orbit. We'll send other missions to Gilly. I'm in no hurry. We've got oodles of science now, right? 827.7 science. And, you know, I'd like to get some science from the jewel system and have to go to some other uh, planets like the mohos of the world, the dreses and the elus, rather than just getting it all from the stuff closer by. We aren't going to test the whole life support stuff very well if we just hang out close to Kerbin, after all. So, speaking of the life support, um, we should see info. Looks like Bill's stress is only at 5%, radiation 4%. The radiation worries me because, again, we do have lifetime radiation to worry about. And Bill is apparently exposed to radiation despite pretty heavy heat, uh, pr pretty heavy radiation shielding. So that stuff is really heavy. I'll decide in the next episode whether I want to do another landing or not. Or possibly we'll decide closer to the transfer window back. But we're in no hurry to focus on this. I, I'd rather send some stuff to Jewel or to Drez. And definitely we have stuff to send to Duna because we've got those Ike contracts. So we can't just follow Bill back home. We've got other things to do. So me in the next episode will be de dealing with that. And then when we focus back on Bill... We'll decide whether to land one more time on Gilly and then bring him back. Okay, so Bill will just have to hang out here for now. And he's carrying quite a bit of science that we didn't transmit. And we'll hope to make sure to get that back, Bill, right? Um, he's got the core with the data on him, right? Uh, or, uh, no, it's all stored in the command pod. Well, that's for the best. Okay. So leaving Bill here around Gilly, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.